Welcome back, everyone. Today, I wanted to show you a piece of research that recently came out. That's kind of a feel-good story. The article is the Stonefly Tenyopteryx show in Mundi conquers Europe's busiest waterway, which is the Rhine. And this is a bit of conservation research that is kind of unintentional conservation because this particular species wasn't uh, intentionally being pursued as far as recovery goes. But recovery efforts were underway for the Rhine, and this species happened to benefit. So first, for those of you who aren't familiar, these are Placoptera, which are stoneflies. And they are a relatively basal group of insects. They're kind of the first group of modern insects which learned how to fold their wings. So they are Neoptera. But you can see out of all of the orders of insects here, uh, pretty far or pretty high up on the list are the Placoptera, the stoneflies. And these are a group of aquatic insects. The adults fly around, but the juveniles spend their entire time in the water, in freshwater or semi-saline environments, and they are very sensitive to water quality. They can live for years in their juvenile state, so any disruption to the environment can disproportionately affect these organisms, and they are generally considered a good indicator of water quality. So the Rhine ha used to have a lot of these, and they are basically non-existent in the Rhine anymore because of changes to the river structurally and changes uh, in water quality because of pollution following the Industrial Revolution. This is what they look like in their juvenile forms. They have uh, a external gills all over their body, which they use to breathe, and they are very, very sensitive to things like depletion of oxygen in the water. So not just the presence of chemicals, but also uh, if the water becomes too stagnant, they can't breathe. And so they they will uh, the population will collapse. So if we look at the Rhine starting up in Switzerland, let me change colors here, starting up in Switzerland and then the Delta being down uh, in the Netherlands. Generally speaking, as you progress down river, things get worse environmentally. And the population of stoneflies and all other aquatic invertebrate, invertebrates really drops off. The, this research was primarily done in the lower Rhine, which is here in this orange. But as you get closer to the ocean, things get worse and worse. This becomes a very high traffic environment that something like five to six hundred ships a day pass through this part of the river. You also have a ton of industrialization that has occurred on the river banks from the 1800s to the 1950s uh, following World War II, and just there's been a ton, of t a ton of damage. Not only that, but you've had carving outs of the river to get rid of uh, the meandering curves, so it's faster for ships to go down the downstream. And the issue with this is it makes the river deeper, it makes it faster moving, and it really destroys the environment for a lot of these aquatic invertebrates, especially for stoneflies, which are. Uh, generally found, like the name would suggest, around large stones and in gravel and things like that. That's where they generally hang out. So we can't talk about problems with the Rhine without talking about the Sandals incident. And this is uh, a chemical spill which occurred in the 80s. So basically what happened with the Sandals incident is way up in Switzerland or on the Swiss border in Basel, you had a major fire in a chemical warehouse, in an agrochemical warehouse. And thousands of tons of pesticides and other chemicals ended up being burned and then washed into the river. Uh, so this was in 1986. And this incident in which uh, you had this massive fire and then the efforts to put the fire out put all these chemicals into the water, which washed into the groundwater and into the river. And not only that, but you also had all these burning chemicals. So the whole uh, area was blanketed in these chemical fumes. This ended up killing basically everything in the Rhine. Everything downstream of uh, Switzerland, basically, was absolutely toxic. Here, this is an actual picture. The river turned red for like hundreds of miles. It was awful. Everything died. You see all these dead fish here. This incident completely exterminated most of the stonefly, uh, the remaining stonefly species in the Rhine. And there weren't 
a ton at this point. For, since about the 1920s, there had been an absolute collapse in the stonefly population, with many of the species in the Rhine going extinct. But this was really the nail, uh, the final nail in the coffin for the invertebrates in the Rhine. It wiped out a lot of the fish populations. It wiped out almost all of the invertebrate uh, species populations. It was a huge, huge issue. But after this incident, there was a big push by countries along the Rhine to better uh, control pollution into the river, improve water quality, things like that. There has been a concentrated conservation effort on the Rhine because of this fire. So this is what I mean by this is not uh, a targeted conservation effort. This is a broad conservation effort to improve the Rhine because of how much damage, damage had been done to it. So enter the paper that we're talking about today the, for the stonefly Teneopteryx. What is interesting with this species is basically following this fire, all stoneflies were basically destroyed in the Rhine system. And this stonefly was not one which was known from the Lower Rhine. There were records of this species occurring in some of the tributaries of the Rhine, and there had been a few records of this species occurring kind of along the Swiss border. But for the most part, there, there had been no real stonefly species left in the Rhine in Germany. This survey was done on the Lower Rhine, which, which is kind of the portion of the Rhine right before you get into the Netherlands. So this is on the German-Dutch border. And someone had noticed upstream of this that uh, stoneflies were starting to be recorded. So these researchers went out and began surveying the Lower Rhine, hoping that they would find some stoneflies. And they actually did. Uh, this one species, Teneopteryx uh, Schoenmundi, I'm probably not saying that correctly, uh, ended up being collected in multiple locations, both males and females uh, flying about. So actively emerging from the water, they had completed their life cycle, which generally can take a couple years, and they had been actively breeding and populating the area. And so this is huge news. This is the only species of stonefly which now is known to occur in this area, but it has migrated in. They're not entirely sure where this species has come from, uh, it's possible that it came from more upstream in the upper Rhine or on the Swiss border and migrated down, but that's uh, like something like 500 kilometers. They don't know if it actually came from there. Uh, they suspect that it's coming from some sort of refuge, some minor tributary or, or creek or stream where the species managed to survive. And not only that, the Rhine has now improved enough that it has moved into this river that it never occurred in before. Did it never occur there before, or are there just no records of it occurring there before? One of the problems is, is because the destruction of the river kind of began in the early 1800s, if you didn't have records of these stoneflies from before then, you just assume it's not present. So it's possible that it was there before then, and that the water quality had deteriorated so much that we just never found it in the river post-destruction. Uh, but it has it has moved in. It is now one species which has uh, repopulated the river, at least in the Lower Rhine, which is kind of one of the worst hit areas of the river. So there are hopes that more stonefly species will begin moving into the area. And this is kind of a big deal for other things as well. Stoneflies are heavily eaten by fish. Uh, just to ask any sort of fly fisherman, they frequently model their lures after things like stoneflies or mayflies. Uh, so this sort of basic invertebrate species occurring now in the river gives hope for higher order animals in, in kind of this food web, uh, which would feed on these to be moving into the area as well. Generally speaking, the Rhine is populated by inventive species following the destruction of the river. It's mostly foreign species that are able to tolerate a very toxic or heavily modified by humans environment. So you have somewhat of a resurgence of uh, old species into the river, which is pretty cool. I will link all the references in the description if you want to read them. There is a reference specifically on the Sandoz incident that I will link uh, if you want to read about it. It was pretty destructive. And also I'll link this research article. It's very short if you want to read it. It's only about nine pages, mostly pictures. Uh, and data tables. So it's not bad to read and I'll talk to you guys later.